Hello, my name is Richard Randolph and I'm honored and privileged to serve as senior pastor here at Christ United Methodist Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm delighted to welcome you to this service of worship on this, the third Sunday of Advent. Here at Christ uh, United, we strive to be an open, welcoming, and affirming community of faith. We remember that God created each one of us in the divine image of God. We believe that each of us are children of God and that God seeks to love us and to be in a loving relationship with each of us. So we are delighted to welcome everyone, regardless of uh, socioeconomic class or political position or sexual orientation or any of those other things that we use to differentiate ourselves from one another. We believe that there's strength and diversity and so we welcome everyone as children of God. Before our service of worship begins today, I'd like to remind you that our, our community of faith uh, needs your fina financial support so that we can continue to offer these services online during the coronavirus and so that we can also continue in all of our other ministries. If you'd like to provide financial support for our, our faith community, you can do so in two ways. Uh, one way is to support us uh, electronically. The other way is simply to write a check to our church and to mail it to us at our address at 4538 Street, which is now on the screen. So please, I encourage you to join with me in supporting this faith community. I'd also like to re remind you or to let you know that next Sunday, on December the 20th at 3 p.m. in the afternoon Central Time. We will have a special uh, holiday worship service, the first of our worship services for the Christmas holidays. This will be a Blue Christmas uh, service. Uh, Blue Christmas ser uh, worship services um, or special services of uh, comfort and um, of hope. Uh, for those who are struggling with the, uh, the holiday season. So if you or someone you know is struggling with grief or despair or loneliness or depression, I hope that you will encourage them to tune in and to join us for our Blue Christmas service. And let us now unite our hearts and our minds as we begin our worship service.
We are currently in the liturgical season of Advent. Advent is a four-week period of preparation before we celebrate the birth of the Messiah and God's incarnation. Along with the season of Lent, Advent is a time of penance as we remember and acknowledge our sins and shortcomings, asking for God's forgiveness. At this time, will you join with us in a spirit of reverence as I offer up this prayer of confession on behalf of us all. Omnipresent God, we confess that sometimes we have difficulty letting go of our fears and trusting that you are with us. Just like Zechariah, we ask for a sign or a guarantee of your love and care for us. We cannot seem to fully trust in you and your love for us. Just as the Father in the Gospel of Mark, we cry to you saying, I believe, help my unbelief. Forgive us, O merciful and gracious God. Move within our hearts and minds. Help us trust in you and your love. Help us to experience your presence with us, even when we are afraid of all the threats around us. May the merciful Lord grant us true repentance, forgiveness from our sins, and a changed life. We are forgiven and healed through the love and mercy of God. Thanks be to God. Most of us have experienced fear this year. We have experienced fear concerning the coronavirus and its threat to our family and friends and even ourselves. We have experienced fear of economic loss, fear for the polarization in our country, or fears from potential personal losses. Yet, throughout history, God has spoken these words to the faithful, Fear not, for I am with you. God spoke to Mary, Fear not, and Mary trusted. God spoke to Joseph, Fear not, and Joseph trusted. God spoke to the shepherds, Fear not, and the shepherds trusted. Even today we can feel overwhelmed by our present fears. God speaks to us, Fear not, for I am with you. When we trust that God is with us, then we can put aside our fears and experience the abundant joy of Christmas. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light three candles. We relight the candles of hope and peace. Today we also light the candle of joy, remembering that God intends for us to live lives filled with joy because God is with us. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings, join with me in an attitude of prayer as I lift up a prayer on behalf of our entire faith community. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, we pray for our faith community here at Christ United Methodist Church and for the world. We lift up members of our congregation, and all of those around the world who struggle with this terrible coronavirus. We pray for healing for those uh, individuals who uh, are struggling with the disease. We pray that you'll guide the thoughts and actions of their doctors and other um, care providers. And uh, so we pray for healing for them. For those who are not able to heal, we pray that um, even at the end of their lives, they may experience the peace and the joy of feeling in their hearts and in their minds the warmth of your love for each of us. We pray also for those um, who have lost a loved one to coronavirus or to some other uh, disease. We pray that uh, you may give to them a different type of healing the healing from the grief and the sorrow which they experience. Help them to feel also the warmth and the strength of your love, as well as the hope um, and the joy that comes from knowing that uh, your love transcends everything, even death, and that our loved ones are still loved by you, even in the next life. Dear God, we also pray for first-line uh, health care providers who um, seek to use their medical uh, expertise and experience to provide healing, to be channels through which your healing may flow. We pray that you'll watch over them and keep them safe as they perform their, um, their healing and uh, as they care for those who are sick. We pray for other members of our congregation and for others around the world who are struggling with other Ill illnesses. We pray for those who are fighting against cancer. And uh, we are praying also for those who are in physical rehab, recovering from surgery and from, from other medical conditions. We pray that you'll bless them with the gift of healing as well. We pray for all of those who um, have suffered or are afraid for their um, financial sustainability, for those who have lost jobs or worry about losing their job due to the coronavirus, for uh, those who are concerned about their businesses. We pray that you may be present in their lives to give them hope and to give them uh, wisdom and to help them not to be afraid but to know that even in this most trying of times, you are with them. We pray for the leaders of our country and pray that you may help them to be led uh, by your Holy Spirit. We pray that you'll soften their hearts to experience compassion, that they may work together to work out uh, solutions uh, so that help may be provided to all of those members of our country all of us, our fellow citizens, who suffer so much physically and financially from this dreaded pandemic. We pray for our world as well. We pray that you will move not only within the hearts and minds of our leaders, but of the leaders around the world, that we may work together in fighting against this disease of 
uh, COVID-19 and that we may work together to find peaceful solutions to conflicts so that your kingdom may begin to be established. All of this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, a reading from the first chapter, verses 5 through 20. This is part of the Advent scriptures leading up to the birth of Christ. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all of the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and, wo bo and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God, and his section was on duty. Zechariah was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and to offer incense. Now at the time of this incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Be not afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will name him John. 
you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the, Lord, of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God with the power and spirit of Elijah. He will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. Then the angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you shall become mute, unable to speak, until the day that these things occur. The Word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. Our scripture reading today is about Zechariah, who was a religious ruler and leader at the time of Jesus' birth. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were very devout Jews, keeping all of the rules and laws and regulations of the Jewish faith. They were very happy in life, except for one important thing. They had no children. Since both Zechariah and Elizabeth were both getting fairly old, the prospects of them ever having a child were looking dimmer and dimmer. And yet they were both very faithful, and so they prayed fervently to God that God would somehow, some way, make it possible for them to conceive and have a child of their own. In the scripture, we hear the story of Zechariah. We learn that one day he was randomly selected from among all of the other priests to go into the Holy of Holies within the temple and offer the incense up to God. He was to offer the incense as a part of an important worship service that day. Now this was a very high privilege. Biblical scholars tell us that it was unusual for a priest to be able to offer the incense to God in the Holy of Holies more than perhaps just once in their entire ministry as a priest. And so this was the day for Zechariah. It was the day in which he was going to be able to go and offer up this incense. It was one of the highest, most important days in his ministry as a priest in the temple. So as Zechariah goes into the temple to offer the incense, it's certain that he was deep in prayer, praying to God, and asking God to bless all of God's people, fervently praying as, as he offered the incense. And then suddenly, to his right, Zechariah saw the angel Gabriel. Zechariah was startled, and he was terrified and filled to overwhelming with fear at the sight of this angel. Gabriel. But, but Gabriel reassures Zechariah, saying, Fear not. And then Gabriel proceeds to tell Zechariah the great news that God has heard the prayers of Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, and that God has decided to uh, give them a son, a son who was going to grow up to be an important leader within the Jewish people 
an important religious leader who would bring other people to a closer relationship with God. Now, as we reflect on this story of Zechariah today, I'd like for us to remember the story of Mary, which we've been reflecting on the past two Sundays, the first two Sundays of Advent. And I'd like for us to reflect on these two stories and sort of compare and contrast the story of Zechariah with the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, there are some important similarities between Zechariah and, and Mary. Both of them were Jews. Both of them were devout Jews who worked hard to keep the, the Jewish commandments and rules and regulations uh, and who prayed fervently to God. Both of them, as devout Jews, were looking forward with, with great anticipation to that day when God would fulfill God's promise to the Jewish people and give to them a Messiah who would restore the, the, the Jewish people and uh, help them grow closer to God. And one final similarity, both Zechariah and uh, Mary received uh, a visit from the angel Gabriel. And when they first encountered Gabriel, both Zechariah and, and Mary both were, were startled and terrified and overwhelmed with fear. And in both cases, Gabriel reassured them by saying, fear not. But of course, there's some important other differences between Zechariah on the one hand and Mary on the other hand. Uh, they lived in a patriarchal society that valued wisdom. So on the one hand, Zechariah was an older man. He was highly educated. He was a priest and an important religious leader within the Jewish community. On the other hand, Mary was a young peasant girl she was not educated at all, she was poor, and she came from a humble background. On the one hand, at the time when he saw the angel Gabriel, Zechariah was involved in devoutly praying and in leading an important religious service, while on the other hand, when she encountered Gabriel, Mary was just going through the routine of a normal day. On the one hand, Zechariah responded to Gabriel by asking for a sign or a guarantee or some reassurance that the words which Gabriel were speaking were true. While on the other hand, when Mary heard the message from Gabriel, she responded by giving thanks to God for blessing her in this very special way. On the one hand, Zechariah doubted, while on the other hand, Mary believed. On the one hand, Zechariah could not trust uh, God, while on the other hand, Mary did trust God. Zechariah, on the one hand, tried to believe and trust only with his head, whereas Mary believed and trusted with her head and with her heart. Mary knew in her bones that she could trust these words from the angel Gabriel because she could trust God. Now, when we do a comparison of Zechariah on the one hand and, and Mary on the other, it's, it's easy to jump to the conclusion that Mary was all good and faithful while Zechariah was sinful and unfaithful and bad. And, and as we heard from the scripture, there were consequences for Zechariah's lack of trust in God. But here's the key point. The key point of this scripture reading is that God kept God's promise to Zechariah. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth conceived and had a son. Their son was John the Baptist an important prophetic leader for all of Israel 
who prepared the way for Christ, the Messiah, to come. Even though Zechariah doubted, God did not stop loving him. Even though Zechariah doubted, God remained faithful to Zechariah and kept his promise. God kept his promise to Zechariah. And that is so important. That is the key point of this passage of Scripture. Now, let me just step back for a moment and say that I'm sure that those in our community who are listening to the message today, that we are not all that different in our faith than these two characters from the first chapter of Luke. We are not all that different from Mary and from Zachariah. Just as for the two of them, so also I know that in the, our faith community, among all of those who are listening to this message, there are some of us who are like Mary, and there are some of us who are sometimes like Zechariah. But the important point of this scripture is that God remained faithful and God kept God's promise to Zechariah. Even when we doubt God, even when we turn away from God, God still remains faithful to us as well. God remains with us and watches over us and cares for us. God never abandons us. Even in one of the most terrifying times that any of us have ever experienced, God is with us and God loves us, even when we have doubts, even when we are more like Zechariah than we are like Mary. Of course, I also know that among those listening to this message, there are many who are more like Mary. When they are faced with very frightening threats, the Marys among us can set aside their fear. The Marys among us remember God's love and how God has kept God's promises down through the ages. The Marys among us can trust that they are not alone. They trust that God is with them and that ultimately God will take care of each one of us. And as I mentioned already, I suspect that there are many among us who are like Zechariah. Although they may deeply love God, the Zacharias among us are not able to cast aside all of their fears and fully and completely trust God. The Zacharias is among us doubt and they search for a sign or a guarantee or some reassurance that they can trust God. And who can blame these Zacharias for their lack of trust? Almost all of the public institutions in our lives have betrayed our trust. Government has betrayed our trust. Currently, the federal government cannot seem to find even the smallest amount of compassion in order to approve financial assistance for families who have been financially decimated by loss of jobs and work opportunities through the coronavirus. We can't trust public media to always give us uh, fair and accurate news either. Each media outlet seems to have picked one side or the other, and so they tilt their reporting to support either cons a conservative perspective or a progressive perspective. Sometimes when you listen to two different uh, media outlets, it's almost as though they're not reporting news from the same planet. We can't trust our corporations either. The leaders of corporations seem obsessed with maximizing the bottom line, and as a consequence, environmental pollution, lying and cheating, 
and even laying off loyal employees are all deemed quite acceptable so long as they help maximize profits. And what is most sad for me, we can't even trust churches to do the right thing as the ongoing sex scandals which affect all denominations so vividly demonstrate. If we can't even trust the church, then how can we be expected to trust God? Given our present context, it's easy to see that there, how there are many Zechariases among us who don't seem to be able to trust God either. In previous sermons, I have shared with uh, my congregation how there have been times in my life when I had difficulty fully trusting God. I tried to rely on myself and my intellect and my other abilities instead of putting my trust in God and being able to set aside my fears. I think that there are times when each one of us have been more like Zechariah than we've been like Mary. But ultimately, here's the good news of the story of Zechariah. Even when we can't fully trust God, God continues to love us and to be with us. Even in the most terrifying times when, when fear grips uh, the back of our throats like a vice, God has still not abandoned us. We are not alone. God is with us and God will care for us. Just as God kept God's promise to Zechariah and continued to love him even when Zechariah could not trust God, so also God will keep God's promise to us even when we find it difficult to trust and love God. That is very good news for all of us, both the Zacharias and the Marys of the current generation. Amen. Hello, my name is Colt Ballou and I'm the music director at Christ UMC. Today we are presenting our virtual anthem for our Christmas program this year, Go Tell It on the Mountain. In order to put this together, we had our children and youth each individually record themselves singing with a track and then they sent it to me and then we put it all together into one anthem so you will get to see and hear the children singing even though it sounds like they're together they actually did a lot of work putting this together by themselves so we hope you enjoy this and from the sunday school from the choristers from the chair choir from the children and youth and from kim garrison and myself and all the staff of christ umc we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays.
please join me in this final benediction. As we celebrate Advent and as we live through the trials of 2020, we need to ask ourselves, are we living in the present or worrying about the future? In Matthew, it says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. We as Christians are called to trust God as Mary trusted God and to live in the present. And so I pray that God gives us the wisdom to seek him today, shows us opportunities to serve others today, and gives us courage to stand up and speak out against injustice today. And I pray that God fills our hearts with so much love, it's overflowing, and that we take that love and we share it with everyone around us today. Amen. Mm -hmm.